Hey guys, this is Jeff, Swing Trade Warrior with WarriorTrading.com, back with our weekly trade, uh, close trade recap video. Uh, we have a few trades to talk about this week, and uh, we'll go over uh, some of the details and uh, our new open positions as well. Uh, once again, I want to remind you guys, we do offer a seven-day free trial if you're new. Uh, to warrior trading and you want to check us out we do day trading uh, news reversal momentum trading intraday and we also offer swing trading with text and email alerts as well as the alerts that go out in our chat room so um, we are uh, currently running a uh, day trading education course and I will be starting up the swing trade education course in the next few weeks so if you're interested uh, in taking the swing trading course or the day trading course uh, just contact me at jeff at warriortrading.com I'll put my contact info below this video and I'll get you guys a 25% discount on uh, the total of the course. Uh, having said that, let's get into uh, some of our closed trades. First one I want to talk about <clears throat> from this week, Twitter. Uh, we got in Twitter on March, looks like, uh, let me check my blotter here. We got in Twitter on March 20th, <laughs> and what I saw, my drawing tools out here, blow this up a bit. Okay, what I saw here is after the gap up from earnings, Twitter was trading sideways in this range here. Uh, you know, below 46 and the top of the range was definitely $50. So, it was definitely looking to capitalize on a break of this range over the $50 number uh, as it had acted as near-term resistance. And if we go back a few months, you know, we can see when uh, it shot up after IPO, it traded above 50 for a little while. So, I was watching Twitter um, coming off of the curl here on the 20 moving average is this uh, purple line. I don't know if you can see that. I use EMAs and uh, I'm getting a nice curl off the bottom here. And I identified uh, my initial long trigger at 48.50 for this. Uh, there's a couple of reasons I chose that area. Uh, if you can see on uh, your screen, there's a red bar right there. I use the TAS market profile indicators and this is the TAS box. Uh, market boxes that they offer as part of their suite of indicators. I also use the market map here. The, it identifies support and resistance levels based on previous price action and volume. So it's a proprietary indicator that they have uh, so we're not able to know exactly what goes into it but what we do know is that a large number of institutional traders are using this uh, indicator, this set of indicators. So. Uh, the reason I use this particular one is because on high volume stocks like Twitter that uh, big money is going to trade, I want to be able to see what they're looking at as far as entries and uh, potential shorts or stop areas. So that's why I use it. Uh, that was the first reason I saw 48.50 as a uh, uh, an entry level. Uh, the second reason is because after we had this curl <clears throat> off, the, off the little sell off here. Last time we were at 48.50, it shot down to 46 and it started curling back up and it tested the breakout of it twice there. Um, previously, it had held that level, so we know that previous support can become resistance and vice versa uh, depending on the direction of your trade. So I was looking for that 48.50 level to break and hold, and once it did, uh, you know, I would get long. So on March 20th, we had a break of the level, got long at 48.50. My next target was uh, on half size. I only took 500 shares. I only take half size when I get into trades, uh, and that's to manage my risk. I can give them more room than letting a full size trade uh, roam around. So I put my stop back here at 46 bucks, um, just under 46 bucks. I didn't figure it would get down there, but I wanted to give the trade enough room to work in case it wasn't ready. Uh, you know, we had a few catalysts in play with the NCAA uh, going on, as well as some uh, potential advertising catalysts. Uh, coming out of the Twitter world as well, so we had a nice uh, we had a nice fundamental reason for this to break above that 48.50 level and then the 50 and to hold it. Well, once we got up to $50, uh, a day or two later, uh, we ended up doubling our size over 50, and we now had a thousand shares long through <clears throat> this move up here to fifth, just under $52. Um, I sold. Uh, I sold somewhere 51 and a half or so. I sold half and I trailed the last half. And we ended up getting a really strong close on this big volume, uh, this big bar day here. We closed at 51.47. So all the way near the top here, this bar. And uh, what I did, uh, you know, I looked over at previous history on this chart here and I said, well, that 52 level's definitely been some resistance in the past. Uh, that's the next key level that I wanted to see get taken out so that we could make a run to the highs at 56 bucks. 
Uh, I had an order ready to double up to scale back into the trade, another 500 shares on the 52 break, but the next day it couldn't break and it sold off, uh, got caught in a market pullback and a lot of profit takers came in and pummeled this thing back down to under 50. So I put a stop in, a uh, profit stop in, and we ended up exiting this trade for just about $1,500. Um, I had 2000 plus on it, so I left some on the table because I wanted to give it room to run to the upside and break that 52 area, but it just wasn't strong enough. And it's curling again. Uh, it's actually bear flagging right now, but uh, there's a good possibility. Uh, the catalysts are still in play. There's a good possibility that we pop over 52. So I'm going to be looking at that 52 level to reinitiate a swing position, and then I'm going to watch for it to take down this 56 level uh, from back in uh, well, 2014. Okay, so next trade I want to talk about is Commvault System CVLT. This trade was a bit of a disappointment. Um, we traded this a few months ago, uh, well, a couple months ago, uh, for a nice four point rip up through, uh, you can see right back here, uh, actually, I guess it was the beginning of March, so it was a few weeks ago. Traded this for a nice four or five point move from our entry off of this flag down here. Um, and we caught it all the way up to just about $50, and we took uh, some nice profits off on it. So it sold off over the next few weeks, set up again, traded sideways, put in a little flag, and we got long on this day right here when we broke the 20 moving average. Unfortunately, uh, the next few days it had different ideas in mind, so we ended up stopping out for about a $800 loss. So, um, again, this is why we use a half size position so we can give the trade room to work, and our losses are generally about half of what our winners are. And we try and trade everything with a minimum of a two to one reward to risk ratio. Next trade I want to look at is going to be HA Hawaiian Holdings. Okay, transportation sector got a nice pop up after. <clears throat> Let's see, here's the gap on this. Got a nice pop up after, um, uh, excuse me, airline, uh, Hawaiian Airlines got a nice pop up after they released some news that they were expanding services. And after their earnings gap down, they'd curled off the bottom here and began trading at the mouth of this gap. There's a gap uh, all the way up to 25 bucks from 22. And so that's where I wanted to be long uh, for that potential gap film. We got long on this at 22.10 and uh, I took a, a thousand share position here and I was looking for a move to 20 uh, to 23 to double so I'd be carrying 2,000 shares through the gap however the next day oil got uh, a nice pop up on Middle East volatility uh, some issues with Iran and Yemen and so or, uh, Saudi Arabia and Yemen so uh, we ended up catching a nice pullback because oil prices spiked all transportation stocks got hit so again, this is another trade we ended up stopping out on. Unfortunately, uh, we timed it wrong as far as uh, the activity in crude. It's been favorable for airlines lately. However, uh, we managed to trade it the one day when war was on the verge of breaking out. And of course, the very next day uh, that subsided, but not before we had to respect our stop. So one of the better trades from this week was on Array Biopharma. Uh, IBB has been getting hit hard. Um, biotechs are pulling back and IBB is the sector ETF for uh, uh, for biotechnology so um, I was watching this trade for a while here uh, after its giant move up here back uh, in January from the five dollar area it put in this huge long consolidation period uh, where it was basically bouncing between eight and a half dollars and seven seventy seven seventy five or so um, it tested that eight and a half range, couldn't break it to the upside, and slowly it's been giving it up, trading under the 20 moving average, which is a bearish uh, signal. And I was watching this uh, 774 area as an entry. Now you can see the red and green lines here. These are the TAS boxes I talked about. This is also uh, you know what other institutions were looking at, and uh, this is what I was certainly looking at as far as an entry level. Well. On uh, the 25th, we got short with a few thousand shares. As soon as 774 broke, it never looked back. Came right down, tested the 50 moving average, which is where I had my uh, order to cover half. And then I was gonna trail the last half over the next couple days to give it a chance to come down and test the $7 area 
uh, or the 690 area. Anywhere in between there, I figure we might get a small test. Uh, and then after that, it's going to be a move, sharp move down to the 200 moving average here at 560. So we covered half here. <clears throat> and on the next day, uh, ARRY quickly rejected that $7 area. So I bailed uh, with a profit stop in, uh, and now it's starting to reverse a little bit. So that's, uh, this is why I use moving averages to help me identify uh, potential areas of support and resistance in a chart where there is none because you have these big bars here where it shot up over a couple days and there's really not a lot of trading in the recent history in this area so we have to look to the moving averages to help guide us and you can see that obviously other people are too uh, the buyers came back in and propped it up right on the 50 moving average and it truly is picture perfect uh, picture perfect trade once that 774 area was broken which it hadn't seen since uh, back in early February we got one instant move to the downside and we locked up uh, uh, I don't know how much do we make on this trade we locked up 1200 on this trade um, my biggest regret on this was not taking bigger size um, but you know hindsight's 2020 and can't complain about a winner uh, this could trade along the 50 moving average and put in a bear flag here and it might eventually break the seven dollar area and come back down to five and a half so i'm gonna keep an eye on it and uh, i'll look to get short again under seven dollars one of the other shorts we took this week was on nsc norfolk southern um you know they've been getting pummeled uh they downgraded their 2015 fiscal outlook uh which pulled in the whole transportation sector uh, had this nice sell-off right through the 20 and the 50 moving average, uh, clean move to the downside one day where it stalled out, and then it continued its move down. Waited for this uh, break right here on the day that it stalled out, which is about 105.85. Uh, the next day, we got short at 105.85, and we caught a clean move to the downside uh, for a couple points. Now, I identified this 102 area is going to be uh, as being a potential area of resistance for shorts. If you look, it's obviously long-term support. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, there's 20 or 30 days in the past few months where it has tested that 102 area and bounced every time. Uh, this was no exception. <clears throat> so I anticipated that, but I knew we had a few points of room for profit. We got short. We added a little bit to our short uh, on this day. And when we came in and tested this 102 uh, area and bounced off of it, we started scaling out as uh, the price action began to recover. So we ended up locking in a little over a point and a half on that move once we averaged uh, into the trade. So it wasn't as big of a move as I would like. The bulk of the move had been made back here from 109 down to 104 over these three days. But we waited for the optimal setup, uh, which was uh, a break of the previous day low here, to tell us that, no, it's not overextended to the downside, and there still is more uh, room for this to shake out. And so that's what we counted on, that's what we got, and that was a nice clean trade for us. Uh, one other trade I'm in right now, CYTX. <clears throat> this one had been a big mover uh, in the past few weeks. It shot up from uh, under a buck to about a buck fifty. And it's holding uh, this level that it's trading in right now. And I looked uh, again, you can see the, oops, you can see the TAS boxes here indicating a long position uh, over the 130 area. And once we get over 130, we hit 147 at recent high and we're in squeeze zone uh, from previous uh, oops, let me let me see if I can zoom this over. I'll scroll it over. Once we hit that area, uh, you know, there's plenty of room to recover up to $2. So uh, there's a gap here at 190. I was just looking to trade this over 150. I have a few thousand shares here. Uh, I feel pretty comfortable holding it above the 20 moving average because if you look in the past few, uh, past couple months, we haven't had a break of the 20 moving average yet. So my stop is just below this 20 moving average. I expect it to hold. Um, not sure if we're going to break down to the downside of this channel here. We have a tight stop on this trade, only 17 cents of risk. Uh, but definitely looking for a move over 130 to 140. And uh, I'll be adding at that 147, 150 area once this trade gets up there. If not, we're stopping out on half size at about 113. One other trade that I made a change to this week was my USO position. I've been uh, position trading USO for quite some time. And so uh, we caught a nice spike up or gap up the other day on that uh, Middle East uh, issue. 
I mentioned earlier. And uh, so we're long 3,000 shares with an average of 1707. And I haven't bought any shares for a few weeks. Uh, I'm just using uh, covered calls to lower my position average. So I sold some May weeklies um, that were uh, spiking up on the day we gapped up here, which was, uh, what was this, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday. So I took, uh, I wrote 30 covered calls, uh, $20 covered calls, and um, I was able to lower my average to 1707, and it caps my win now at about $9,000 if we're trading over $20 by the first, end of the first week in May by expiration of those calls. If we're not, no big deal. I'll look to do it again on the next spike up, and I'll just continue lowering my net cost of the trade until we're able to either get called away and lock in our profit, or until we get a sustained move to the upside and a reversal in oil overall. Uh, so those are the big plays that we made this week. Um, next week, uh, my watch list is out. Uh, you can check it out at warriortradingnews.com where you can uh, find watch list uh, with my entries, exits, and triggers at warriortrading.com under the Swing Trade tab. Uh, if you're a free trial member, you have access to all of the swing trading and day trading uh, information that we put out. And uh, you can also sign up for our text alerts and our email alerts. If you guys have any questions about any of the trades I talked about, or you want me to review anything, uh, feel free to uh, send me an email, jeff at warriortrading.com. And uh, also, I don't know if you guys are interested in financial news or not, um, but I have to recommend uh, you check out cnafinance.com or talkmarkets.com. I'm a contributor, contributor to both websites. I put out a uh, article weekly on various topics, anywhere from market analysis to risk management and trades. And so we've been getting a lot of positive feedback from uh, those places. And I encourage you, if you're interested in learning uh, more about the markets, or finding uh, some of the fundamental news and catalysts uh, that I look for in trades. Um, you can gain a lot of information and insight from those places. Uh, other than that, everybody have a good weekend, and we will catch you next week.